Hallelujah. I want to let you know that you are in for a good time with the Holy Spirit. Your best days have finally come. God is advancing us forcefully like he advanced Moses and Aaron. And I want to assure you that as far as God is concerned, no more stagnation for you, no more moving round and round in a circle. He said to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6 and Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24, he said, don't stop running around this mountain. Take your journey and move forward. That's what God wants. In Exodus chapter 14 verse 15, he said, go and tell the children of Israel whether great is there or not does not stop my plan and purposes for their lives. He said, go and tell them to go forward. And I want to let you know that God is more interested in your going forward than you are because he's fiercely protective of you and me. We are his possessions. So I bring to you today, in this second to the last day of our fasting and prayer, this is the 69th day. Tomorrow is the 70th. Wonderful. Just like yesterday, we started this journey and a lot has been happening and will continue to happen. And humanity will never remain the same again for the fruits of this fasting and prayer. I want you to realize that God says, my name is jealous. My name is jealous. That's the way it was. This is chapter 34, verse 14. He says, his name is jealous. For he is jealous. That's the way it works. God is jealous. When you say someone is jealous, that means the person is fiercely protective of his possessions and rights. And that's the way God works. God kills and God makes alive. His jealousy that drives him and love. It is the love actually that uh, projects his jealousy. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He destroyed Korah and company plus his household and 250 other people. He destroyed them. He destroyed Ananias and Sapphira. He destroyed the earth in the time of Noah. And everything is from his jealousy. God does not want us to go after other gods. Exodus chapter 34 verse 14. He said, you shall not worship any other god. For his name is jealous. For he is jealous. So God wants us to be single-eyed. Matthew chapter 6 verse 22. He said, the eye is the light of the body. And if your eye is single, then then your whole body shall be full of light. So God wants us to be focused on him and nothing else. Because in him is life. You see, when we get out of him, we wander into death. That's the way it works. So God wants us to remain focused on him. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. He says, look at what he says. Very, very instructive. But first, I want to show you what the Bible says in Psalm 127, verse 1. He says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, they watch it. They watch the watchman work, work it, but in vain. So you can be watching, you can be building, and you are there doing your own. God says you are just keeping things in vain. John chapter 15 verse 5, he says, without me you can do nothing. John chapter 3 verse 27, he said, a man can receive nothing except it be from God. Anything you receive that is not from God is bread of sorrow. That is the way it works. So we must make sure that we are in tandem with God because he wants to promote us further. Anytime we do our own thing, we go backwards and God does not want that. He wants us to go through his word, through his instructions. They are profitable. That's the way it works. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. He said, all these scriptures is given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And they are profitable. Profitable, profitable. So that's the way we follow God, by following his word. And verse 17 says, it is to furnish us unto all good works, not to punish us. So anytime we begin to walk out of the word of God, he becomes jealous because he wants to protect us. So I pray that none of us 
will walk out of his way and that will understand this nature of God that says, my name is jealous. I am fiercely protective of my possessions. You are my possession. That's why he said in Psalm 23, verse 26, my son, give me your heart. God cannot ask you to give something he has not given to you. Before he asked Abraham to give Isaac, he had already given Isaac to Abraham. He didn't ask him to give that until he gave Isaac. He didn't ask Abraham to give Isaac until he gave Isaac. Look at the children of Israel. While in Egypt, as they were living, their luggage became gold and silver. They were decorated with so much gold. They had great favor. And they really, really collected so much. God allowed them to get that through his favor. Then somewhere in the wilderness, God now demanded for it to build his temple. So God will never ask you to give something he has not given you. And he said, my son, give me your heart. I am a jealous God. For when you do that, then we can begin to walk in tandem. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. We'll be on the same page. And then you'll be able to, to exemplify me on earth. You become heaven on earth. That's my desire for you. You won't begin to struggle and struggle and struggle on your own. I want to help you. And I cannot help you until you give me your heart. Because out of the heart comes the very issues of life. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. And I am watching you through your heart. Give me your heart. Once your heart is far from me, you are departed from me. Your actions can show that you are with me. But if your hearts are not with me, you are off the way. And Messiah did all that was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Second Chronicles chapter 25 verse 2. I need your heart. Your heart I need. I judge things from your heart. I weigh things from your heart. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10. He says, I cite the reins and the hearts of men to give every man according to the doings of his ways. In verse 9, God says, The heart of man is desperately wicked. He said, Give me your heart. Give me your heart. And let your eyes observe my ways. God demands that. So anything you are doing without that is in vain. That's what Psalm 127 says. You see, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, Kai, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Can you imagine that? I pray that today will be that turning point for you to say, Lord, I surrender all. I surrender my whole being, my heart to you. Because once you surrender your heart to you, I surrendered everything to him. Remember Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27, he said, give no room to the devil. So your heart, my heart is for God. He is fiercely protective of us. We are his possessions and not the devil. Whoever you give your heart to determines who is in charge of your life by time. And God said, my son, give me your heart. My name is Jealous. I am a jealous God. If you give your heart to someone or you share it with me, you share your heart with someone else. Ah, he said, I'm jealous. I am jealous. Understand that. When we listen to what the Bible says in Psalm 60, Isaiah chapter 60, Psalm 60 verse 11. Psalm chapter 60 verse 11. He said, give us help in trouble. For vain is the help of man. Men go looking for help from men. But God is saying, I am your helper, your ever-present help in time of trouble. Psalm chapter 46, verse 1. Why will you see something up here trying to scratch from the ground? And when we do that, we are paining his heart. It's like he has food for us on the table. He has set a table for us and we are eating crumbs with dogs. It pains him. That we are living the life is not designed for us. And it's not him. It is your, in my hand and in your hand. My son, give me your heart. I am a jealous God. My name is Jealous. I can't tell you to give me what I have not given you. That's the way it works. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5. He says, Trust not in any man. He says, Woe is him that trusts in man. What are we doing today? We are trusting in things. We are trusting in men. We are trusting. We put our eyes on men and he's spreading the heart of God. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. 
My name is jealous. I am a jealous God. God wants us to come back because he's establishing his saints. Malachi chapter 3 verse 17 and 18. He says, And you shall return and you shall see how I am decorating, preparing my jewels. And you shall discern and you shall know that I, will, I, I have distinguished those who serve me. There is a separation between those who serve me and those who serve me not. This is the time. And I will spare them like a man spared the son that serves him. So God is preparing his jewels, raising giants of strange orders. Joel chapter 2, a great army that has ever been. And God takes such army from the heart. My son, give me your heart. That's where I am raising the giants of strange orders. Those who are standing in different areas of life, in different endeavors. Give me your heart, my son, my daughter. Give me your heart. That is what God demands. And I'm praying for you today that any dissenting voice trying to divert you, trying to divert your attention from God. Today, they are completely silenced in the name of Jesus. All forms of distraction against your giving God your heart totally and absolutely. They are hereby silenced forever and destroyed in the name of Jesus. God is wrapping up his age. He's raising men and women. Men and women. And may you be part of this great army in the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus. And everything stems from the heart. Look at Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 that I just mentioned a while ago. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 says, Wow. God searches the hearts and the realm of men. That's one thing we must know. But understand this. Understand this. The Bible says, Thus said the Lord, Cause be the man that trusted a man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. Can you see that? So once your heart departs from God, you're already cursed. He say you are cursed if you trust in man and you're making flesh your arm. When you have a big God, the maker of the heavens and the earth who does not slumber, Psalm, verse, Psalm chapter 21 verse 1, he said, from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who is the Lord, the one that has made heaven and the earth. He does not sleep nor slumber. He's always there for us. And you're making man your arm. It pains him. I'm a jealous God. He said, you are cause for, you are cause. He said, thus said the Lord. Is God talking? Cause be the man that trusted in man. Wow. Cause be the man that trusted in man or that trusts in his strength and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. May your heart not depart from the Lord again. My son, give me your heart. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. And let your eyes observe my ways. That's what God is saying. Verse 6 says, For he shall be like, Hi, God, help us. May our heart not depart from you again. He says, For he shall be like the heat in the desert. Wow. Jesus, this is serious. When your heart departs from God, you'll be like the heat in the desert. He just he said like a shrub. That heat means like a shrub in the desert. How does a shrub survive in the desert? That shrub will be pecking dry. He says, when your heart departs from you, when you trust in man, when you trust in your strength, and you make arm, the arm of flesh, your trust, he says, you'll be like a shrub in the desert that is dry. And God wants us to flourish. When the rod of Aaron was dropped in the tabernacle of witness, by the next day they came, the rod of Aaron blossomed was decorated by God. God wants to decorate you, wants to decorate me. But God is saying, give me your heart. Let not your heart depart from me. Oh God. And he continues to say, and such shall not see when good cometh. How can you possess it? Genesis chapter 13, verse 15. God said, look, look, Abraham, look far. For it is what you see you can possess. 
He said they shall not see when, it, when good comes. Why? Because their eyes are in men. Their eyes are in the arm of flesh, in their own strength. They are proud in their own strength. And God resists the proud. And then the humble, God lifts up. God wants us to humble ourselves in his mighty arms. And it is the heart. He looks not just the action. He weighs every action. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. He said, God is a God of knowledge. Before him, every action is weighed. Daniel chapter 5, verse 27. Tekel. He weighed the king and he said, You are found. I've weighed you by the balances of heaven. And you are found to be wanting in heaven. You can be on earth showing off, but in heaven, you are nowhere. That's the way it works. I believe God that from today you shall see when good comes and you shall possess the goods in the name of Jesus. And your life, my life, shall become an exemplary of heaven on earth. We shall be heaven walking the streets of men. God walking the streets of men. Psalm 82 verse 5, he said, I have said that you are God. I'm not just saying it, I've said it before. But you say you don't discern it, you don't believe it, you don't understand it. And because of that, you are walking out of course. And you, you may die like mere men. I want us to give God our hearts so that we can become God that he has made us. He said, unto whom the word has come. Jesus saying, he said, I didn't make myself God. But it is written, unto whom the word has come. The word is God. He says, so you are God when the word comes to you. When you receive the word in your heart, in your subconscious, then you are God. And I'm praying today you shall not miss it again. And he says... Look at, but shall inhabit the patched places in the wilderness. So when you are, your heart is not in God, you are trusting in men. You may think you are doing well. You're not doing well, sir. You're not doing well, man. Money is not all. He said, you shall inhabit the patched places in the wilderness and in a salt land and not inhabited. That's the way it works. Okay, look at verse 7. It's blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is for he shall be wow for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh but her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought neither shall cease from yielding food hallelujah this is wonderful that is how it began to run to verse 9, that he said, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God said, I can know it. Verse 10, The Lord searched the heart, tried the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. Beloved, you must understand this, that God brings us into favor, and favor gives us all that is when our heart is with him and i want us to get this clear today i want to give us an example our example today is david david a man after god's own heart the bible says in clear terms in psalm 89 verse 20 he said i have found david a man after my own heart and i have anointed him with my holy oil he said i found him how did i find him because he gave me his heart Second Chronicles chapter 16, the Bible says in verse 20, he said, The eyes of the Lord searches to and fro the earth, to and fro the earth, to see those whose hearts are perfect before him, to be strong on their behalf. So God is searching, may he find me, may he find you. He is jealous, he found David. And first Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. Samuel testified, he said, He has found a man after his own heart who will reign in the place of Saul. He has removed Saul and he has raised the man. Whenever we give God a house totally, God raises us up. That is the way it works. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. God testifying about Samuel, about David. He said, David is a man after my own heart, after the heart of God. He pants after my own heart. Verse 36, 26, 36, sorry. He said, David served his generation. You can't serve God 
without giving him your heart. It's a hearty thing to serve God. It is not just something to play around. You must do it in good will, good intentions. And it comes from the heart. That's the way it was, in good will. It comes from the heart. He said, if you be willing and obedient, that is from the heart. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. God will give you the good of the land, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. That's the way it works. Look at what David did in Second First Chronicles because of this. First Chronicles chapter 29. Wow, this is very instructive. Chapter 29, verse 3 says, and if you have time, read from verse 1. He said, Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of God, my love to the house of God, I have of my own proper good, of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God, over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house. You see, when your heart is for God, then you give God your time, you give God your energy, you give God your resources. It becomes a lifestyle. And then you have given God a chance to redecorate you. He says in verse 4, Even 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of Ephraim, of 7,000 talents of refined silver, to overlay the walls of the houses of, of the white houses with her, the gold for the things of gold, and the silver for the things of silver, and for all manner of work to be made by the hands of artificers, and who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord. Living Bible say, who is ready to take this same example? This is a month of divine consecration. Divine consecration is all about giving God your heart. And when you give God your heart, you consecrate everything about you. Say, David said, who else can take after this my example to consecrate himself and his things to God? I am ready and I hope today is that day you will be ready because that's what God demands. We have struggled enough. We have suffered enough. And God said, my son, I didn't make you this way. Look at verse 6. Then the chief of the fathers and the princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of the thousands and the hundreds with the rulers of the king's work offered willingly. May our lives engineer others to consecrate their lives, to offer willingly their life, their hearts, their possessions to God so that God can continue his work. God is not begging anybody. He's the owner of all. But he wants to transmit his resources through us. But our hearts must be there and our goods must be with him. Now look at verse 12. He says, Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. In thy hand is power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all men. Hallelujah. It is in thy mind to make great. That is the way it works. Psalm chapter 44 verse 3. It makes it clear that God makes great and gives strength to those who are ready. I pray will not miss it today. My name is Jealous, says the Lord. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Psalm 60 verse 4. And I want to let us know that we don't have to struggle where there is no struggling. Talking about David and in closing, look at David. Last year, Israel celebrated 3,000 years of the reign of David. Can you imagine? He died 3,000 years ago and is still very relevant in the affairs of today. Even more relevant than most people who are living. We are supposed to do better works because Jesus said, greater works we shall do. He was in the old covenant. We are in the old covenant, in the new covenant. The Holy Spirit is indwelling us to, pro to, to prosper our ways in God. 
All we need is to give God our heart. Look at today, Jesus holds the key of David, even in heaven. Blind Bartimaeus shouted that he said, Jesus, thou son of David. That is, thou son of sure mercies of David. Look at the name of David because he has been he, he has been set aside because of his heart. And if we do the same, we'll get the result. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. God is no respecter of persons. Mark chapter 13, verse 37. Whatsoever he says to one, he says to all. So if we do it right, we'll get the results. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. He said, don't be slothful, don't be lazy. Be you followers of them who through faith and patience inherit promises. That's the way it was. We have several examples to follow. David, an eloquent one. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. He says, seeing that we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily beset us. Let us run this race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame of the cross. So we have examples to follow. And David is one of them who gave his heart to God. My son, give me your heart. Some dead people are more relevant even in the present day than the living. And I pray that you'll understand that God is saying, my name is jealous. I am a jealous God. Don't worship any other God. Don't worship yourself. Don't worship your strength. Just worship me and I'll propel you from where you are, catapult you from where you are to where you ought to be in the affairs of life. Beloved, we have just two more days to go today and tomorrow in our fasting program, 70 days fasting program. This is the 69th day. Please kindly join us. It is not late. You can join today and still get all the benefits. Remember, it is loving God. It is loving people. It is touching lives positively. It is serving our God. There is no negotiation, no option for this. No compromise. I am fresh fire. We are missionaries on assignment to connect the whole world with God's love and God's presence, preparing humanity for eternity with our God. Thank you. Hello there. Are you worshiping with us for the first time? Congratulations. You are most welcome into this great gathering. This is no coincidence. We believe that your steps were ordered by God and He has a plan for you. You are now a candidate of God's revival. We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, preaching and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here, your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.